Okay, page four, we'll finish up on this uh, unit, chapter 14, 15, on Renaissance and Reformation. Um, so in this section, it'll mainly focus on the Reformation. Uh, this was, some people feel, feel it was caused by the Renaissance as people started to question and challenge the established church. And again, of course, when we say the church, we mean the Roman Catholic Church. <coughs> so by definition, uh, the Reformation was a movement to reform the church. Uh, the word reform means to change. Um, the word Protestants is the name given because of people's protests. And these later became uh, the name for religions, uh, Protestants. The next two. Um, so John Huss and John Wycliffe uh, criticized church practices, 13 to 1400s on the time period. Uh, they felt there was corruption, um, corruption within the church and that the church had also uh, become too worldly. And an example of the corruption that they felt was an indulgence. And in, indulgences were church pardons that people bought from the church. Um, this is an actual uh, picture of an indulgence. So there's information there. And then Johann Tetzel uh, signed that one. So typically what you do is you go in, you, you, know, you sit down, the priest is next to you, they can't really see each other very well, um, at least my understanding of it. And you say, uh, forgive me, Father, for I have sinned. It's been six weeks since my last confession. Then they would tell the priest what, what sin they had committed. And then the priest usually tells them, okay, go off and do 10 Hail Marys and you're forgiven. Okay, well, with this, what happened was they would go in and confess their sin, ask for forgiveness, uh, and instead of that good works, they would just make a payment, and then they were forgiven. So uh, many felt that that was a, uh, an example of the corruption in the church. Uh, Martin Luther was a German monk, and he was the leader of this uh, Protestant Reformation that was taking place. He lived from 1840, or 18, sorry, 1483 to 1546. And he taught Bible studies at the University of Wittenberg, or as Germans say it, Wittenberg. Um, now he wanted to be a lawyer originally, uh, I think the story goes, but his father, I don't know if his father wanted him to be a lawyer, but uh, anyway, he was out riding a horse one day and I got bucked off. There was thunder, lightning, storm, and uh, he got bucked off. He took that as a sign that he should become a monk. Um, he was very well versed in the uh, Bible. Um, and he, he believed that salvation came through faith in God. So he felt it didn't matter what you did, you just had to believe um, in God. Okay, something quite famous that he did. Uh, he posted what he called a 95 thesis, and a thesis is an argument. So it's his arguments against the church in which he attacked the sale of indulgences. Uh, this took place on October 31st of 1517. Uh, this picture here is showing him nailing it, uh, a copy of it, to the door of the church in Wittenberg. But if you go there today, there's these um, bronze plates and these 95 theses are carved into uh, those plates. They're, they're still visible. In my classroom, I have a, um, I don't know how many pages, six, five or six, seven pages, looks like six. Um, anyway, they're just taped together and laminated and I unroll it and I tape it up onto my door. Um, I tell the students that's one of the first things I printed off when we got that new thing called the internet back in 1995. So Lutherans were people who followed Luther and believed in his ideas. Um, so he was called into the city of Worms 
W-O-R-M-S, to see if he wouldn't uh, take back what he had said. And when you take back something you've said, it's called to recant. So they wanted him to recant. Uh, well, he didn't. Uh, he didn't want to. And so he feared that, you know, he was excommunicated in 1521, but he feared maybe more than that would happen to him. Maybe he would be burned at the stake. So he fled uh, to the castle of Frederick of Saxony, located in Germany, and changed his appearance, grew a beard, changed his name. He became known as Sir George. And while there, he uh, translated the New Testament into German. <coughs> okay, uh, Peace of Augsburg. This ended the religious wars in Germany and it allowed princes, German princes to decide the religion for their own land. Um, so between Ferdinand, who is the future Holy Roman Emperor, acting for his brother, Emperor Charles V, um, followers were to adhere to the denomination of its ruling prince. So that's what this did. So, uh, you know, gave them a little more freedom, but they still had to follow the, uh, the religion of that prince. Okay, another man, John Calvin, he joined reformers in Geneva. Of course, I asked the students where Geneva is, Geneva, Switzerland. Um, and developed a form of Protestant belief called Calvinism. So in many cases, all they had to do is change one little small thing and it be could become a new, a new religion. Um, his main idea was predestination. And so predestination is having it predetermined whether you would be saved or not. So didn't matter what you did, it was already decided. So that's predestination. And I think I have a definition here. So people were chosen by God or predetermined for salvation. Um, predestination was doomed from the start. I don't know if you can see that. Uh, one person's being lifted up. And over here it says, you know, predestination would speed things up on judgment day. I guess that would, would be true. Okay. Um, French Calvinists became known as Huguenots, um, and John Knox carried Calvinist ideas into Scotland. Um, we'll be talking about Huguenots a little bit later in another unit. Um, I also think that uh, maybe it's coincidence, but maybe John was a pretty popular name back then. Okay, so the Act of Supremacy uh, this was an act of parliament that declared the monarchy, Henry VIII, to be the head of the Church of England, um, and it renounced papal authority. So within the Catholic Church, my understanding is you can't get a divorce. And so he wanted a divorce from um, Catherine of Aragon because she didn't give him a son, like it was you know, all up to her. But he felt that, you know, if she can't give me a son, then I'll, I'll find somebody else. Uh, the two of them did have uh, Mary the first, a daughter, but he wanted a son. So by being Catholic, who, he couldn't divorce her. So he had Parliament make him the head of the Church of England. Now he was open and available to divorce. And he found another woman in his court that he liked. Her name was Anne Boleyn. Um, I don't know which, which one, but he was eventually married or had six wives, and one of them did finally give him a son, but he was kind of a sickly boy. I don't think he lived very long, I mean, as far as, you know, really coming to power, but um, but they did have the one daughter, and she became known as Bloody Mary, so name given to um, Mary the I, who was Henry and Catherine of Aragon's daughter, and she was given that name because of her persecution of English Protestants. So the Counter-Reformation, uh, these were reforms to strengthen the Catholic religion. The church felt like they were losing people. These other people are starting religions, starting to attract other uh, followers. 
and they needed to step in and do something to, you know, to put a, to put a halt to the people leaving and to maybe try to get some of those people back. So they have the Council of Trent and they came up with three things from this council. Only the church could explain the Bible. You know, don't listen to anybody else. Only an authorized person from the church could explain the verses in the Bible. Two, both faith and good works were necessary for salvation. So some believed you only had to believe. Some believed you, if you did good works. Um, but the church felt that both faith and good works were important for salvation. And then the Pope was the highest and final authority uh, in the church. You know, don't, don't listen to anybody else, only those that were authorized, but the ultimate uh, decision was the Pope's. And then the final one, um, the index was a list of books that Catholics were forbidden to read. And that concludes our unit on Renaissance and Reformation. Thank you.